What's up? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to talk about, this is a continuation video from my Hidden Gems part one. So at this point, this list includes um, 10, I actually made sure I had 10, 10 Hidden Gems for Philadelphia. And I will also include some honorable mentions. Stay tuned. So first place that we're going to talk about, we are starting at number one. These are not in any particular order whatsoever. Um, we are starting at the Philadelphia Academy of the Fine Arts, also known as PAFA. This is located on Broad Street and it is close to in Center City. It was founded in 1805. It was the first and oldest art museum and art school in the United States. It is also known internationally for its collections of 19th and 20th century American paintings and sculptures and works of on paper. Now, also, I also want to mention that this video is also a lot of museums. So <laughs> there's a lot of museums in Philadelphia. <laughs> okay, so going on to number two, um, which is Shofuso Japanese House and Garden. This um, Japanese house is located in Fairmount Park in West Philly. Um, it's kind of, it's right, it's around like Belmont Road um, in, in Fairmount Park. It's a traditional 17th century style on-site um, Japanese house. And it was um, on the site of the Continental Exploration Exposition of 1870. It was built in 1953 and it was a gift from Japan to American citizens to symbolize post-war peace and friendship. I've asked, if you watched my previous video, I had a video where it's the secret pond in West Philly. I actually did walk by the Shufuso Japanese house. It is actually, that home, the Japanese house is, is actually closed due to COVID. It was closed at the time during the, due to COVID. Um, but I actually um, went there for a field trip in college because I used to, I, I study Japanese language. I, I, I can't, <laughs> I can speak a little bit of Japanese, but I forgot since it's been so long. Um, but we went there um, as a field trip uh, to the Japanese house. It's really peaceful and it's really beautiful and very authentic. They have a lot, they have tea ceremonies. They have like in the spring, they have their cherry blossoms. So if you're into Japanese culture or you just want to experience something different in Philadelphia, this is the place to go. For number three, we are at the National Museum of American Jewish History. It's located in Old City um, on Market Street. It's right, it's really close to Independence Mall. It's a Smithsonian affiliated museum in Old City and it was founded in 1976. Uh, number four is Fairmount Waterworks. Now the Fairmount Waterworks is along the Schuylkill River. It is right next to, um, it is on Kelly, off of Kelly Drive. It's in between um, Boathouse Row and the art museum. It was, it's Philadelphia's second municipal waterworks. It, it was designed in 1812 by Frederick Graff and built between 1812 and 1872. And it was operated until 1909. It's currently a restaurant and as well as it's an amazing place to take photos. So a lot of people have their weddings, they get their engagement photos, family photos, they do their photos there. You can actually see it from 76 across street, but it's right next to Boathouse Row. It's, um, and, and, and it's also an interpretive center that explains the purpose and local watershed history. And it became a National Historic Landmark in 1970. Number five is the National Convention Center. Now, the National Convention Center is actually in Old City. It's right by Independence Mall. It's an interactive museum and a national town hall for constitutional dialogue, but it doesn't house the original constitution. It's actually in DC. If you want to look find the original constitution, it's actually in DC. Um, but the groundbreaking ceremony was held on September 17, 20, 2000 on the 213th anniversary of the signing of the Constitution 
and it opened on July 4th, 2003. So when I found out that this was actually, when they, when they um, broke ground, it was only oh, like 213 years ago. That's not too long ago. So this, this country is really, really young. Going on to number six, we are going to Fort Mifflin. Fort Mifflin was originally called Fort Island Battery, Fort Island Battery, <laughs> and it was commissioned in 1771. And it sits on, on the island near um, the Philadelphia International Airport. Um, this is for history buffs. Um, it's actually in, um, I guess you can say it's like Southwest because that's kind of where the airport is. During the Revolutionary War, the British had bombarded and captured the fort in autumn of 1777. And it was named after Thomas Mifflin, which was a general. <laughs> so if you're into history and just want to have a fun field trip, um, Fort Mifflin is the place for you. Then moving on to number seven, which is the Institute of Contemporary Art. It is located on the University of Penn campus. And uh, so there's not too much to say about that, but that is an art another art museum that you may be interested in. Okay, moving on to number eight. Number eight is the Museum of American Revolution. It was dedicated to telling the story, the revolution. It opened in, to the public on April 19, 2017, on the 224th anniversary of the first battles at Lexington and Concord on April 19, 1975. And it's also located in the old city. Since Philadelphia was, I guess you can say, the birthplace of the United States, of what we know of with the colonies and whatnot, a lot has happened in this city. So there, I can understand why there's so many museums for, uh, but they're small, like if you go to DC, that's where the Smithsonian's are and they have a lot more going on there. This hit, but you know, Philadelphia is full of history. Okay, moving on to number nine, uh, which is the Mosaic Temple. It is across from City Hall. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's um, right across from, from um, City Hall. The address is 1 Broad Street. It's on the North Philly side, the North side of Broad Street, I should say, but it's right across the street from City Hall. It serves as the headquarters for the Grand Lounge of Philadelphia of free and accepted Masons. The temple features the Masonic Library and Museum of Philadelphia, um, which includes seven lounge rooms where a number of Philadelphia and Ground Lodge um, members conduct their meetings. I've never been inside of this building, but I've seen it all the time because it's like, it's right across the street from City Hall. You kind of can't miss it. But from what I saw the pictures inside, it does look like a big place and pretty cool to see. I would like to provide some honorable mentions at this point. Number one for honorable mentions is the Rocky statue. Now, Rocky is um, pretty big for Philadelphia. Like if you come to Philly, when you go up the main art museum steps, everybody does their Rocky pose run up. But uh, they go up the stairs and do the Rocky thing. <laughs> so that Rocky statue from Rocky, I believe Rocky three, um, I believe that's where the Rocky statue came in at that point. It's actually so next to the art museum steps. So you, at the top of, or I should say where Ben Franklin um, Parkway goes around um, in front of the um, art museum, Rocky's to the right. So driving in the area, you see crowds like hurtling around Rocky, the Rocky statue and taking photos. So if you wanna see Rocky, he is to the right of the art museum steps. Number two is the mural arts. Now, if you come to Philly, we are known for a lot of murals. We have a lot of murals all throughout the city. So there's not one particular place to really say, but it's just that you just find them. They're just in random significant places throughout the city. So if you're driving down Chestnut, you'll see different murals. You'll probably see a good handful of murals if you go to West Philly, parts of North Philly, South, I don't think there's really, a, there, there's some in Southwest. There's definitely a lot in University City. Um, there's a lot of murals in South Philly. There are a lot of murals all throughout the city. So gotta get that an honorable mention.
Number three is Ben Franklin Bridge. Now, I don't see how this is a hidden gem. You basically, it, you can, I gave it an honorable mention because um, Ben Franklin loves Philadelphia, so we, there is a lot of places that are named after him. So he has this bridge. Um, you can walk, you can bike, you can take the train along the bridge. It's a pretty big bridge, um, and it connects between Philadelphia and New Jersey. And that bridge is actually 676, which connects, I think it's next to the aquarium. I think the aquarium is, the New Jersey aquarium is right there. So you'll be in Camden, coming from um, the heart of Philadelphia. And number four is Logan Square Fountain and the Bang Franklin Statue Fountain. Logan Square is basically in the middle of Ben Franklin Parkway. Okay, so my last honorable mention is Ben Franklin Parkway. Ben Franklin Parkway consists of several, like two iconic places, things that are special about this park, which is not only the Logan Square Fountain, which sits in the middle of Ben Franklin Parkway. It's also known as the Avenue of the Flags. And I kind of call it the Avenue of the Flags because you see all the countries on Ben Franklin Parkway between um, Logan Square and City Hall. Actually, no, not no, not that. It's basically, it's all up and down Ben Franklin Parkway. You see the flags of every country in alphabetical order. It kind of goes down and then goes back up in alphabetical order. Uh, from City Hall. What makes this is special to me is because my mother is from Trinidad. Actually, what I was, uh, I guess I can, you can say that I'm a first-born immigrant, um, first-generation immigrant. Um, my, my dad is um, American and my, my mom came from Trinidad. It's kind of special to see the Trinidadian flag hanging on, <laughs> on the poles on, on, um, down, downtown. So it just shows that being that Philadelphia has started as a country for, you know, not only for all Americans to be free, but also for immigrants as well. So it's great to know that in this big giant metropolitan city that you have people from all over the world that live here, that come here and live here and build their families here. So it's just a great place to see that. Um, but anyway, moving on, I also like the Logan Square Fountain, which is right there in between. People go there for during the summer um, when it's hot because you get to splash in the fountain. You're not really supposed to, but hey, you do it all the time. So moving on to number 10, we have the Woodmere Art Museum. Um, this museum is located in Chestnut Hill. It has a collection of paintings, exhibits, sculptures and photos um, print and prints um, focusing on artists to live local right um, my office is right on, Ch on um, Germantown Avenue so if I drive just right down Germantown Avenue you're right there it's at the top of the hill um, in Germantown Ave in Chestnut Hill and it's great to see the different artists and different exhibits that are there um, I actually didn't know that was an art museum until it was here, but yeah, you see the art museums and the different exhibits um, and the sculptures from outside. But anyway, that is it for my video. Is there a place that you like that I have mentioned in this video? Please leave it down below. I would love to have a conversation and talk about it. Um, and what would you like to see? Um, Philadelphia is full of hidden gems all throughout the city. Um, I'm just going to leave it at part two. Um, if I see any other, I will definitely do another video and include and do another hidden gems video. But if there's anything that I missed, please let me know and I will go over it. So with that being said, like, share, and subscribe to this channel. It really helps the channel a lot when you do that. Again, if there's anything that I can do for you, please feel free to give me a call or, you know, leave it in the comments below. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next video.